Hello. Hey. All right. So you watching? I am. Awesome. Here's what I've got. First of all, everybody. Mm. Should I call you Mothra? Or are you uncomfortable using your name? No, yep, Mothra. Mothra, it is. Mothra's here. I am Kaz. I have some resources here. Here we have this 14th book Garfield Swallows His Pride. He says his pride needs more salt. And also, I've got his 17th book Choose the Fat. Okay. Yeah, I'm like looking at his is like bookography and it's it's all yeah. pretty derogatory it's usually pr pretty much like this garfield at large garfield the second one is actually called garfield gains yeah. weight we had more like that's the title I don't know where they are this is all that i feel like we really need because every time i clip through random things i find crazy things about mr garfield and i'm mr um, jim I davis and everyone else i believe what prompted this was that right. one really fucked up strip that Jim Davis put out around Halloween where uh -huh. Garfield's entire world is this vacant purgatory. Oh yeah. And Can his you house me was that? Abandoned. Because I want to, I want to set up a way to show my show stuff in a browser. Yep. I got it here. Awesome. So that will be a good resource. Also is stuff that we find online right now. Um, how long do you want to go for? Until we run out of material. We have 39 years of material, <laughs> so we, when we when we figure out Jim Davis, when we solve all his problems, get him on the phone tonight, yeah, then maybe we can do this. So I want to display capture, I guess. I mean, I don't have any porn up, so this should be fine. Yeah. Let's see. I mean, I have porn of myself, so if I decide... To flip that on, I flip it off. All right, go ahead and link me. All right, it's in the Discord chat. Awesome. Okay. Here we have. A this strip. was this was 1987, okay. I think, and it was Got right it. before Halloween. Got it. And it's like on his website, so it's real. Like there was a couple of rumors yeah. going around that it was like no, fake. Often, somebody often people are like, did they really it do is. this? And they always really did that. So, Burr, there's a chill here this morning. What an eerie sensation. This doesn't feel like my home. John? Hey, are you okay. frame for frame reading? A this is account? important. This is one of the most important okay. ones. Anybody home, you, I'm alone. I have, you have no idea how alone you are, Garfield. It goes on. Steady, Garfield. There must be a good reason why the house is empty. John must be at the grocery. It says for sale right here. Board it up. It's the house that Garfield's inside. My home has been abandoned. No one has lived here for years. But that means I haven't lived here for years. What's that? And he sees himself running. John, Odie, you're home. Hello, have some food, Garfield. And he imagines himself it's getting food fucking and disappears. Disappeared. Walks like, faster than a time. Through. When he no longer exists, Garfield grapples with his greatest fear, loneliness. <laughs> After years it feels of like he's like Look at this eye. Display. Look at this art. Have you ever seen art? Any art of any kind <laughs> in Garfield? His eyelid is sweating. Everything's wrong. He's going bloody mad. After years of taking life for granted, Garfield is shaken by a horrifying vision of the inevitable process called time. <laughs> he has only one weapon. Denial. God damn. I don't want to be alone. Want some breakfast, Garfield? <laughs> like, I like how he screams it in his mind because he can't it? talk. I need you. And imagination is a powerful tool. It can tint memories of the past, shape perceptions of the present, or paint a future so vivid that it can entice or terrify, all depending on how we conduct ourselves today. And there is no Garfield strip before or since that is anything like this one. Okay. I had two, two kind of thoughts on this. One, it yeah. like just by first thought is like when he, he reaches for the food and it pass his hands pass through the food it yeah. like felt exactly like a twilight zone episode where they become like time displaced or like that there's like one of twilight zone episode where they like get out of sync with time and they're watching the next minute being built by like people so they're like yeah. existing in like null space which it feels it's like absurd. it's kind of like a langoliers type thing here um, with Garfield. i can't but, like, even 
It is like the, the it is exactly what you've always wanted, Eric Wetbeard. We are going to dig, dig deep into Garfield right here um, and now. Um, as so deep like, as like, possible. It's like the big the thing that like everybody always talks about Garfield minus Garfield because it like made the comic strip really really funny. Right. When they first did it. Right. Like it's like really good comic suddenly happened uh -huh. and it was just hidden behind Garfield. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, this one and, and, and like the idea behind Garfield minus Garfield is that Garfield's just that like he doesn't exist in one interpretation of it. The other interpretation of it is that John sees Garfield all the time. Yeah. And like Garfield does not exist. It's just a projection of John's mind. Uh -huh. So it's like him just creating his id like discussing him like d d fracturing himself into multiple parts I guess and then talking to himself sure we had this conversation about um, how we thought perhaps John and Garfield were trapped together somehow in some sort of horrifying immortal <laughs> bond where they cannot be rid of one another just like well, aspects kind of one person might be not able to rid themselves like that another, that right? feeds into this comic though because he yeah. The, the world does not exist in the, in the comic world, like the the yeah. Halloween comic world. So like we can see, everything is we can desolate. See, there are no people. Um, we can see I, John is the id, or no, or, uh, Garfield is the id, the sort of impulsive, selfish yeah. creature. The, the John, hungry, is, John has all kinds of anxiety. Um, he's the super ego. It, yeah, he he's trying to control everything. The more he tries to control it, the more it goes wrong. And then Odie is sort of the idiot. The, well, I don't know how to put this. The idiot. The, yeah. But he's... The idiot? Yeah, the idiot. Got it. Thank you. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. And then he... Uh, <laughs> he um, He's the folly of being happy. Right? Odie is? Like, too dumb happiness? Yeah. Like? Well, I mean, he, he's always shit on by everyone else. He's always it's, the... It's John's the own, the like, self-loathing that tamps down the only joy he knows, which is is like purity of joy which is Odie and then right. like his super ego and then Garfield on top of that constantly shit on Odie and try to like destroy him because they're scared of being happy I mean, it's John yeah. Arbuckle in a nutshell so oh yeah well I mean he's he's joyous but he he gets he gets the shit out <laughs> of it here's today's I gotta make sure that I do this in a slightly better way actually now you mention it when John is happy yeah. he's super stupid which means that like the Odie part of him is his joy and the Garfield part of him is his misery. Here's and it's John like, doing something yeah. absolutely ridiculous. It's not funny. None of this is funny. Yeah, but it's like if Odie could talk, that's what Odie would say. Right. Yeah. So sometimes Jim is Garfield and sometimes Jim is Odie. Or I mean I've John, heard... but I keep saying Jim because look at him. It, he starts the it's very the same man. Let's look up the very it's first the comic man. too. Uh, it's easy to find. I think he is a cartoonist on that. Exactly. I so don't know if that John ever is... comes up again. Uh, I don't think he actually has a job. And I think about it, which yeah. I mean, again, lends into the theory that like he doesn't exist in the actual world. Right. Um, Here's comic strip one. Hi there, I'm John Honorbuckle. I'm a cartoonist, and this is my cat, Garfield. Hi there, I'm Garfield. I'm a cat, and this is my cartoonist, John. My only thought, or our only thought, is to entertain you. Feed me. Uh, the cat is fat. <laughs> He's pretty fat. So, a little backstory on Mr. John Davis. Jim Davis. I will, I will do that all stream. It, he was born in, on a farm, raised on, on, a, on a farm with 25 cats. And I don't care if you're on a Wait, farm or what? not. Twenty-five cats. Come on, no, yeah. yeah. Twenty-five cats. I'll prove it. If Wikipedia means anything, um, twenty-five cats. So <laughs> you shitting me? Right. So he's never been able to get this cat, this cat madness out of his head. Twenty-five right? cats in one house. Twenty-five cats. All right, so he was born in Marlin, Indiana. He's 72 years old now. And he was raised right... Okay. You put this up on the... Yeah, okay. Zoom it way in.
I think I don't think that I don't think it's true. Oh, Holy I'll shit! It says twenty five cats right there. Right there. <laughs> oh my god! Jim is Davis. he okay? What is going on in his cats. life? Did he have? The what barnyard had its cat? share of stray cats. Here, Garfield.com. The man behind the cat. All right. At one point, where is it? About twenty-five stray cats. Right there. So it's pretty, pretty safe to assume that cats were like a very, very formative element in his in right. the construction of his like very basic yeah, identity. The, the wiki article says he. Um, like imagine if you were he married a woman who was like allergic to cats. Okay. At one point, I don't know what that says. I don't know what that means. I think he like if he at well, at some level thought he's a cat like at his id, then him marrying somebody who is biologically unable to be around him, I mean, that just seems like John Arbuckle to a T. Doesn't it? Doesn't it sound that way? Like it's, it's like meticulously Garfield style yeah. sabotaging his own happiness, uh -huh. like kicking his happiness off of a table all the time. You know, for wanting to eat and wanting to feed itself and be happy. And Perfect. just like that's also that's also pure damage, right? That's also like well, I'm just I, I'm just putting food inside my misery, just filling the void. Yeah, I I had I right, there's one there's one theory I heard once about in in the um in the original Star Trek there is Bones and then there's Spock and Spock's the logical one and right. Bones is the emotional one, and somebody thought that maybe it was supposed to be like a brain and there's the logical side of your brain. The emotional side of your brain and kirk is the like super ego yeah moving to the, the ego or the logical side <laughs> and then the emotional side as is necessary to solve a problem i think john arbuckle or the entity that is like the combined yeah. john arbuckle garfield I, I appreciate is a similar that. situation but also we we have people in our lives like that where we need them around sometimes to basically call us on our shit and yeah, try to like, drive you to prison to drive us to prison sometimes when we need when we need to go you know, to prison and they're like it. you know you've been I, too that's much my trouble. philosophy is every now and then people um, need to go to prison i'm gonna show off this one comic here this is um the one i showed you a few weeks ago from 1990 you're my best friend in the whole world says spider garfield's immediate response oh, is violence fucked up so he's, and he doesn't smile until he sees the spider is suffering. <laughs> and then he says, have you noticed how cruel the world is? Spider says, I'm picking up on that. So he's learning, he's teaching others to be unhappy through cruelty. Um, it's fucked up. What the fuck is going on here? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm almost ready to cut stream. I'm so fucking, I have like all kinds of material here and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Can we even think about it? It's hard to, it's hard to imagine. I, think, I mean, I think deep down, all of us have like a part of us that like, uh, you know, it's like the part that's just trying to gather food and fight off predators and, um, you know, like scared of spiders just because they run around really fast. Yeah. Um, Maybe Garfield's just like a part of his brain that's just like terrified all the time and like, oh, I know, terrified of being happy, terrified of spiders. Terrified of right. like anybody pursuing because per, uh, like viewing him as weak in any way, so he has to like be this alpha predator, even though he's like the fat tabby cat that has been like evolutionarily yeah. like fucked by us. Like all of his basically, I mean, he's how does he view a cat? Do you think he views a cat as this creature that comes up and begs for food and fucking plays tricks? Yeah, and and that's like that's that's his like but, a tiger that it's like deep yeah. down if you really dug down to his id like most of us would have like a tiger or a wolf or like a giant up. ape does he own a cat right now his wife is allergic to it i don't think no his no wife he divorced a woman oh he's been married let's see here um twice so he's married to jill davis now as of 20 or uh, year 2000 they've been married 17 years now how how much you want to bet, like she divorced him because of like his 
immediately unseen deep running issues that you did not quite understand when you first met him. Does Jim Davis have a cat? Here's 11 things you might not know about cartoonist Jim Davis. His asthma led him to discover drawing. He drew bugs before turning to cats. We know about that old comic. <laughs> uh, Norm Nat. He got inspired. So one of the things that... Norm Nat. Mm -hmm. That was his first one. We'll look up one of those. Mm. Norm Nat. Uh, I believe the story goes... And I gotta keep the wiki article open on another page for God's sake. Uh, Jim, Jimbo, D D Davitron, Jim, Jim Bobulas, Jim, Jiminus, but Jim, you just, you just Jim, Jim fallen. What? You just um, fallen Jim related words. When Davis attempted to sell Norm Nat as a national comic strip syndicate, an editor told him, your art is good. Your gags are great, but bugs, nobody can relate to bugs. <laughs> so... Instead of going outside of his comfort zone, he went he with would, Mr. Norm Nat. He went looks, way the other direction on that, to would, the point of exactly. making entire comic strips where he just extrudes misery upon bugs for no reason. Well, he's putting himself down on paper, and that's what all art is, whether you're trying to do that or not. It's true. All right. Like that's, Norm Nat. that's Norm Nat in the wrong fucking language. Thank you, Google. Is it? He was never published in English because we just didn't. We wouldn't. Ex we weren't would, ready for, or would not accept a bug-related hero. Here is a Norm Nat comic. No, that's not it. Where the hell is any Norm Nat? These are pigs. It's the U.S. Acres. Okay, fine. Here's the only Norm Nat I can find. Did he grow up on like an actual farm? Like with pigs and cows? Yeah. Well, I mean, I could look up what kind of farm it is, but I think it was just a food farm. He was the former president of Future Farmers Association. Or former huh. president. Did I say future? I did always think that the fact that John Arbuckle came from a farm seemed like insane. Oh my God. Okay. You know? View the image and don't fucking put a pop-up in my face. I hate the internet sometimes. Because he, he's like the least able-bodied human being that has ever lived. Like, doesn't know how to, oh. like, he just drank. Remember one time he just, just took a fat rip at dog cum just because it was on the table? Oh, like, we have to show like that something, one. That feels like something you would have figured out at, on Somebody a farm. Somebody translate that and find out what language it is. Where'd you, where'd you put it? Oh, it's, it was on the, oh, it's on the stream. On the stream. Uh, so I'll look up the that one. I have a copy of it. God, Has, these characters look like shit. He drank the dog cum. What does Norm Nat look I'm like? I'm typing that? some fucked up things into my search bar right now. <laughs> John, John Arbuckle chugging cum. Just doubted a fat, a fat cum just, of fucking hot. Just steam. took a fat rip of that just dog. Just decided nut. it was time to. Hey, what is this? Fuck it. Mm. <laughs> there's a part of I feel like there's a part of us deep down that like a thing is shiny and we're like I want that in my body and so you just <laughs> there's some level of you that wants to just yeah take right, it I in got it like a ball of glitter you just want to like snort it these are common human urges I guess I have to save the image again so I'll have two. Two puppy cum dot jpegs. <laughs> Please, <my> or try. Makes <laughs> <laughs> it the puppy part makes it so much creepier. But this is a real strip, and you can look it up. What year was it made? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that the strip has really changed in 39 years, so it doesn't fucking matter. Here we go. Puppy cum dot jpeg. Become touch iPad. Is there a more incriminating my, file my, name my, that has my, ever been devised? Yes. My son drinks puppycum.jpg. So here is the puppycum strip. Right? That's displaying. Like, yeah. Kaz is like running for president. How a cup of going coffee, swimming John. Like. Why, thanks. Don't don't get that computer. Congratulations, Mr. Arbuckle. You're going to give birth to a fine, healthy litter of puppies. I <laughs> hate puppies. 
Somebody should edit that. So, so her line is just like she, her expression is exactly the same as it is in the first panel. And her response is just like, what the fuck? What the fuck have you done? <laughs> so, Why did you do that? Uh, you might not know this, but BuzzFeed looked into this just last week. I did. Buzzfeed, I saw him trying yeah, to explain it. He did. So what he said was, did it was oh, I, the spider one might, might have been some other year because this was 1990. Here's this article. All right. Buzzfeed. Did just, John really drink it on dog the semen? He's on the table and he immediately chugs it. Like, just you like, know what it is. You, you know it's white, for starters. It's not coffee. Okay. There can't be an ent entire coffee. Like, coffee, you fill it up halfway, right? Like, if you're if it's a cup, a fresh cup of coffee ready for somebody to drink. Oh, somebody ordered the framed copy, the framed original, by the way. And, and, and owns it now. Someone named a real nut slug Holy shit, on look. Twitter. There it is. Yeah. So, on the farm, we used to give half-calf heifers a high-protein supplement to help them deliver healthier calves. He said in a statement to BuzzFeed mm. News, the supplement was provided by our vet. Since Lynn's is a vet, I yeah. assume there'd be some similar supplement for dogs, David said. Okay. So, John is drinking a protein-enriched drink formulated for a yeah. pregnant dog. That's why Lynn's is a healthy litter John would have. It's a very diplomatic way of of calling cum cum is to call it a high it's protein, a high protein supplement. supplement. Oh, yeah, there's no, is that what it there's is? no higher protein supplement in the world. <laughs> That's a lot of protein. I am so I'm befuddled because that intention was not at all clear. Um, note that's an a very, either it's an extremely obscure thing he's, that they had on the back farm. Backpedaling. Back right? Or he's backpedaling and he just, he just wrote the strip where john drinks dog cum and somehow develops a dog's female <laughs> uterus and it goes from his stomach to that uterus it's like the fly it, and it makes that yeah, just like, reverts into his garfield form. Now, i wish that they had taken a turn and followed that, that plot all the way through like for a few months and he has to raise puppies and garfield <laughs> stabs them all or something that we get like good. an uncut birth seat that like somehow still gets through uh-huh uh-huh. Then years later, BuzzFeed has to ask him, like, why he did the entire birthing arc. He's like, well, on the farm, that's the way it, it um, is. So I have what? also some books that we can just flip through and see what the fuck is inside. Uh, and also, for comparison, I have a copy of The Far Side Gallery by Gary Larson. And this is a brilliant comic with clever stuff in it. So, like, we could go back and forth and be like, okay, what did Jim do? And what did the far side do? What what is what what is is this also some kind of unseen cultural and no. like family damage that we just it's don't pure pure just it's just good natured comedy. All right, here's Garfield is like a like a psychosexual takedown of a man's like core identity. Professor the Gizmo and his many inventions. His many Oops, inventions include um, like. It, it's just insane crap. There's just insane crap on the table. The guy's proud of it. It's pretty funny. Um, the bullfighting one here. The bulls are shouting at the other bull. The cape. Go for the cape. It makes no sense. Maybe that's why they do that, right? So this is clever. It makes you. It makes you laugh. It makes you think about something. It's just funny. Garfield. Going back. Here's a strip. I feel like I'm, at, I'm in front of a class. Um, no, you're not going to be like dissecting a far side comic no, 30 years after it's written. No, not at all. Yeah. It's on its face. Will, will that be all? We haven't ordered yet. Here's your check. Have a nice day. Don't you care that we haven't eaten? Not as long as you leave a nice tip. So here, a waitress is smiling and being openly curled to John Arbuckle. This is a random page, of course. And it just clearly does not give one solid flying fuck. <laughs> For some reason, John like, base human cruelty right. is like the cornerstone of his, right. his message. It's not really a joke. Like strip after strip of the like scathing indictment against the human condition. 
Garfield says, sniff, sniff, snuck. And John's response <laughs> is, hey, uh, hey, Garfield, I know you're not feeling well. That's it. They just pulled out a luger. Hey. Hey, I understand that you're sick. End strip. <laughs> no, no jokes. What? What the f is going on? <laughs> Help me! <laughs> I, think it's like a character, I think it's like a character-driven thing where you have to understand all the characters, uh, and then no, it becomes. I understand that they're all <laughs> cruel, horrible people being cruel and horrible. To, to I think I think I do like the idea that we originally do we had where it is just his what's going on in his brain. Like maybe he's just brain dead in this abandoned house, and then staring at the ceiling, and this is what's happening, right. and like. In that world, this this strip where Garfield is sick and then trying to alert oh or God, his super God. ego about it, it's like him screaming at his own body that's sick, like in uh -huh. in bed, just just like, I know you're sick. I know, like him screaming at his own body. I know you're sick. <laughs> and then his own body just is you're sick. S you're sick. You're sick. I know you're sick. I have a challenge for you. I want you to make up. A three-panel Garfield strip. Just, just shout out what's happening yeah. in each panel, and you bring try out a, to try you, to emulate Jim Davis. You bring but up a paint. The challenge is make it funny. Yeah, keep, so. keep bring up paint, and then we can do this frame by frame. Go for it. Can you, you do that you while have I talk? Your... No, I I can't do it on my screen because I can't screencast. Well, anything. no, but you can send it to me when you're done. You know, um, you have to draw it as I describe it. Oh, you want me to? Oh, okay, fine. That's a good idea. Uh, let me get here. Let me just pick one. Not that, it's too weird. All right, good. Here's the original. The original goes like this. It's like that. He's getting grabbed through a fence. The text is, Hey dog, Bradley, Bradley. I laugh at your looks. I spit on your feet. I like picking on the dog next door as long as there is a sturdy fence between us. Knot holes. I forgot about the knot holes. As he's being choked. So I guess the joke is supposed to be that he didn't realize he was in danger. He walks directly toward an open claw. So... Is it, an, is it another cat? It's a dog. He's teasing the dog on the other side of the fence. Okay. A northern torture strip. Right. Here's your challenge. <sighs> Write something else. Got it? Got it. So, first, first thing. He's looking rather cruel. And he's looking into the fence. Or he's shouting through the fence. I guess with his thought bubble, he's teasing the dog. Whatever. Makes no sense. So, yeah, go ahead. He says, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> like, period. I'm gonna fucking do it. Da da da. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and then he says, Come on, you fat fuck. Da da da. <laughs> Fucking do it. Come on, you fat fuck. Yes. Okay. Go see the next panel. So here we are. And then he was like, that's right. That's right, you son of a bitch. That's right. You want this. You want this. You want this, don't he's you? Begging for, he's begging for death you from the dog. fucking want this. That's what he says? Yeah. That's right, you fucking want this, don't you? You want this, don't you, you bitch? Because it's a dog. <laughs> Got it. You want this. You limp-dicked bitch, is what he'll say. 
this. Don't you. You. You want this as much as I do. Limp dick. <laughs> Please say you want this as much as I do. Bitch. You limp dick bitch. You want this as much as I do. So there's our completed strip. No, no, no. The final, the final, that's the middle one, the final one. Oh, I'm screaming. sorry. I that's that's what he's saying. I'm sorry. I wrote it all over the last panel. So this is the completed comic now. No. Come on, you fat fuck. To you want this, don't you? <laughs> fuck. You <laughs> live. <laughs> well, we messed, guy, we messed that up, but I think you it's fucking still, want this. You fucking want this. You want Take this. it. Still Take it. it. I don't God. know what he's trying to do. God. So we have a comment. It says, Eric Wetbeard says, It could be argued that Davis could feel inadequate in life, and perhaps he is treated like John IRL. Garfield has a concept because of his way of deriving comedy and also meaning from his shitty life. Me meaning. Yeah, I mean, sure, but he has the same exact issues for 39 years. If he's still putting his life down on paper, not to say you're wrong, but no, I, I think he might be right. That, like, I don't think Jim Davis has dealt with any of his shit. He's just this has been a stalling tactic of no. his. In fact, what he found might, maybe long. what he found is that success, um, brought him further into that world, right? Because he found that doing the Garfield strip made him a millionaire. It was like, oh, so now I have to live this material. So he, and stay. He, he, you realize he can never be happy if he wants years. to. He can never be happy if he wants to make a living. Like he, right? See, it's not. It's not like he got a shitty job and got stuck with it. He created this industry, and it's his he own really, tomb that he crawled into, he and really then he did. sealed himself up into the tomb. It's basically like a fence. And the fact he, that he did it with such shitty the, material is kind of incredible. I think it's intentionally shitty because he knew. I think, I think this is his way of destroying himself. Are you ready for the next one? Right on me. Okay, it's real simple. Same art each time. Garfield in the window doesn't move. Got yeah, it. Wait, one one thing that's like yeah. I'm kind of wondering is if is John Ar like if it's all the same being Garfield, John Arbuckle, and Odie, yeah. right? If um. Man, that's the entire comic, huh? It's the exact same picture three times. Yeah. Doesn't <laughs> move, doesn't move his hands. Big thought bubble, middle one, and tiny one. So here's your challenge. Do whatever you want, but I don't have much space to write. What he's saying is, I'd like to be able to stop each of those cars and ask the people where they're going. If they didn't have a good excuse, I'd send them home. Of course, some of them may not have a home. How sad. And then in quotes, he says, car people. What the fuck? There's not even a joke. He's just looking at them depressed and being like, why are you even out of your house? You should go home. But you might not have a home. Um, why are you in your car? I, I, I think it's just, I don't know. <laughs> um, Just to finish the thought real quick. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering if... So if it is the same centralized being that has the three parts of the personality. Yeah. We kind of assume that John Arbuckle is in charge all the time, driving it. Yeah. But he's like the most weak-willed being that has ever existed. I don't think he has control of his own body. I think Garfield no. drives him sometimes. John I know, Arbuckle drives I know him other times. Unfortunately, a few people in my life that are quite like that. In yes, charge I think he's and just unable to cast, control anything. Yeah, like in like completely helpless to the three portions of his personality. Sometimes he'll be happy, and that's like as much of a loss of control as. It's crazy that kid, the only way he can ever be happy is if he yeah. loses control and he reverts into his Odi state. Right. That's it's an accident or like a disaster whenever he's actually happy. Right. He feels like an idiot when he's smiling. Like if he runs around, like he's embarrassed by it. Right. <laughs> That's so fucked up. It's just Jim Davis. Okay. Once he boots his own happiness off the table. Because <laughs> it's like taken a level above everybody else. Like it's it's. On the table at the yeah. same level as John R. Buckle and Garth. I was doing random searches. I, I don't know if I can find it again, but the strip was Garfield is looking at John eating lasagna on the dinner table. And he says, I'd like some, basically paraphrasing, I'd like some lasagna. And John just teases him for being fat. 
Did God just call him fat? Doesn't give him a, doesn't give him anything. Just calls him fat and gives him nothing. <laughs> Why? And that's the end of the strat. It's so insane that a human being would become fractured into three parts, and all three parts would hate each other. Like they uh -huh. they are the same base organism, but each part of the other right. is like oil and water, and then whatever exactly. doesn't mix with oil or water. I guess so, it'll be mercury. So right. It's like oil, water, and mercury. Right. So getting rid of that, getting rid of that, and getting rid of that. Here's your new challenge. New text for this one. Is it the okay? The first panel is him. Being like, uh -huh. Jesus God, I should not have drank that cum. <laughs> you realize this is Garfield, second, right? Second, yeah, I think it's like a thing that they started doing. They just, <laughs> Jesus God. Well, technically, he was at the the vet, and that cum was meant for him. I, so I think it was like medically. It was for the dog. Distributed. It doesn't you know, matter. I don't, think, just... I don't think it was for Odie. I don't think Jim's trying to breed his dog. Yeah. It was meant for Garfield. I should not have drank that cup. Next panel. Jesus God, what is happening to me? <laughs> what is happening to me? And it's like he says it twice. The second time, it's more. Jesus out. God, what is happening to? me final panel and then it, it's like lower very small text e, 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 and then growing in size and intensity into capital letters is a, 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 a and then h at the end or it's like yeah! it kind of covers up the rest of the panel until the end it just gets cut off and i like the fact that he's not saying it out loud it's in his mind yeah that's another big telltale time we, can we talk about the the thought bubble for a second. <laughs> Lay it on me. So, yeah, the idea is that who speaks? John. John speaks. Yeah. Garfield merely thinks. <laughs> Whether he's fan. trying to communicate or not, he says things pointedly at John. John sometimes seems to understand, but never quite indicates that he cares. I right? think he can understand him all the time because of the same being, but he decides not to, like, pretend. It's like a fucked up thing that, like, yeah. a relative would do to each other, like, where they pretend they don't can't hear each other, even though yeah, it's physically much. impossible that they can hear each other. Um, yeah, exactly. I think that that's, that's precisely right. Um, I think that he's... He might be trying to say, or maybe he's never admitted, like he never admitted about the dog comp, <laughs> that he <laughs> or justified in some other way yeah that he just <laughs> that it's like no it's just the thought bubble thing it's just a cute comic it's just a cute little <laughs> what? you're saying that this is, this is his like white sperm whale <laughs> yeah that's a good one he's a he's a raving lunatic alright here's a good one <clears throat> He's gonna attack the mailman. The big there's a big yow panel. So you only have to do two panels. <laughs> like First panel says yow panel? Yow. Yeah, you'll see it. Jesus Christ. How about the delay? Because I think I can turn the setting up. Anyway, here comes the mailman. Now's my chance to shred his pant legs. Yow! Sorry, pal, I didn't notice you were wearing Bermuda shorts. He clearly did notice. In the first panel, he is staring daggers at the approaching mailman. So he attacks the mailman, and then he's still smiling. You can't quite see it, but he's still smiling. He's got this tiny little smirk as he's, as he's tossing away John's mail into the bushes. Okay? the fuck yeah the first panel is him being like please don't do it please 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 i can't 
I can't. Please don't do it. Please don't. Please don't. Please stay away. Please don't do, do it. it. Please stay away. He's saying this to the mailman? He's, I mean, it's in his thought bubble, right. but it's to himself. Right. He's trying to talk to the mailman, but he can't, like, say words because he's a cat. Got it. And the final panel. When he's smirking and there's mail everywhere. Like, you knew what I am. Yeah. I can't change what I am. <laughs> it's like him helpless against his own urges, which have fucked up his life in every turn. You know what I am. I can't yes, change Gar what I am. Garfield has never made a good decision, right? Who? Like, Garfield, he's made a selfish decisions constantly, but overall, for the happiness of the core organism, he's never made a good decision. He's like an ex appendix that blasts itself, ex like explodes every day. Please don't do it. Please stay away. You knew what I am. <laughs> I can't change what I am. Oh, uh, we should go through the entire 39 years and fix the whole strip with his eyes. <laughs> Shouldn't we? As soon as, he, as soon as he dies. Poor Garfield. We find an Odie one. Yeah, there's Odie ones on the next page. It's perfect. Okay. Here, look. Uh, there's Odie eating a bowl of food. He gets kicked in the ass. And then he's raising his foot and smiling and there's food everywhere. It was Garfield's bowl. So Odie's eating Garfield's food. And he says, oh, well, it looks like that fell out of this old book. Normally, I'd destroy Odie for this, but luckily for him, I've had a change of heart. Punt. Of course, it will take a while for word to reach my foot. <laughs> I was going to kick him the whole time. I don't know why I said I was had a change of heart when I clearly didn't. You right? change it so the first panel has a thought bubble coming from Odie. Yeah. And, uh, and Garfield or both of them? Just, no, just Cody. Just, just Cody. Just Cody. So cross that out. Doot, doot, doot. Cross it out. Odie, what is Odie thinking? Odie's like, this is wonderful. I deserve this. I <laughs> this. I made this food. I deserve this food. This, I've created I, something I'm going to go delicious. ahead and this is wonderful. I deserve this. Yes. Okay, during the punt scene here. Can, can, you, add, can you also add eating is joy? Eating is like, joy. Like, and just yeah, I'll put that down bottom. Or I'll tip, yeah, I'll put that down bottom of this room. Eating is joy. Okay, during the punt, do you want anything to happen, or just the punt? No. Okay, just the punt. Next, just violence. And it's just and Garfield then, alone with a raised foot. And then, um, his his thought bubble is just him saying, "I'm such a fat fuck." Period. <laughs> I'm such a fat fuck. Like, n like understated, not huge text, just like somber to himself I'm such a fat do you fuck. want an ellipsis <laughs> he's in a thought bubble I would make like it dot, like dot 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 I don't even think it needs three dots but you can put it in there if you want. like no. a fully formed the only thought he had is just I'm such a fat fuck there it is <laughs> like, this is that, wonderful that is I deserve he, this that, that is how he regards food and nourishment <laughs> such a fat fuck I'm such a fat fuck what an asshole. Um, all right. So let me <laughs> let me think for a second. What the f Oh, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. The one we looked at earlier. Where he's at the diner. And he's having a conversation with the waitress. And it's angry and she doesn't serve him. Okay? <laughs> so for people who are just... That classic goof. Yeah, I'm bleeding everywhere. Gamey Bear, hi. Welcome to the stream. She says, well, uh, will that be all? Irma, we haven't ordered yet. Here's your check. Have a nice day. Don't you care that we haven't eaten? Not as long as you leave a nice tip. So that's the original. We have two bubbles there, one, and then two. One, The one panel comes from her in the middle. And go. Just like, please, I need help. I need help. Can you contact a doctor for me? Who's saying that? John Arbuckle. It's to another human okay. being. Okay. I need help. Call a doctor. <laughs> and she's saying, you have 30 seconds to leave my 
<laughs> my, I guess, diner. My establishment. This establishment. I have 30 seconds to leave this establishment. I don't have that much room. You have 30 seconds to leave. <laughs> it is cold blood. <laughs> okay, the next panel where she's alone and giving him the check. And he's wide eyed, and Garfield is completely passive. Let me see it. Um, hmm. Have it be like I have. Uh, this, oh, okay. So your stream just caught up. Um, Did it? Have her say, I have called the police. They will be here okay. momentarily. No, just I have called the police. I have called the police. I've called the. And then police. Can you John say, please no. Please no. Okay, and she's saying. Is John leaving in that final panel? No, he's got his arms. He's got his arms around. He's angry. Please no. And she's I saying. On my hands and knees. I am on my hands and knees. Do you want me to add that? And then, and then, yeah, and that's what he says in the final panel. Okay, and then she's. I am then, on then crawl the fuck out of here. My hands and knees. I get it. And then she says, no, crawl the fuck out of here. Got it. No. <laughs> Look, go to the classic Jim Davis goof. Oh my god, this this would have been a revolution in comedy had it been this straight. <laughs> but this is shit. Uh, all right, please no, no. Call a doctor. You have thirty seconds to leave. Call the police. Please, no. I'm on my hands and knees. No. Crawl the fuck out of here. And improved. Easy. Well, Zynga. Yeah, so let's try to improve a far side strip. Can we possibly improve this? Here are penguins. Penguins on a single ice flow in a big ocean. Four of them. Caption says. Well, once again, here we are. Would you change anything? I mean, you could even just remove the text and it would be fucking funny. Right. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't actually. Actually, that would be pretty sad. Yeah. Is there a multi-paneled one that he, that he, that Gary ever made? Sure. No. Yeah, no, here. No, he didn't. He never made multi paneled one. I'm looking at one, and now you are. It does not exist. I reject this. So it's two aliens talking. Fat alien says Zorf. <laughs> Holy sh wow. There are bolts. And then there's, they're silent. And the one little one puffs up as a response. Then the big one says Kuna Funi. And the uh, other one says, or says nothing. But, um, oh, I can't see everything. So, he just extends his eyeballs. And the fat one's getting angry. And the fat one says, Kuna Funi Funi. And then, the little one is frazzled and extends his eyeballs all the way. So, first he shrinks down a lot. Guy seems pleased, gets annoyed, starts shouting at him, and he extends his eyeballs all the way. Here is what it is. Pet tricks on other planets. Classic goof. That's good. Hey, Kaz, I got a I got an experiment for you. I'm ready? It's more it's more like I'm gonna prove something to you. It's pretty insane, but it kinda goes to show like where Jim Davis's actual strengths are. Okay. Um, we gotta send you some text. Should I do this in Discord or should I do this in chat? Uh, do this in Discord. Actually, if so, you're sending text, do you want it read aloud? No, you can look at it though. 
because you could use slash TTS and the robot would read it to everybody. Um, I, uh, w would that work? Yeah. So I'll just do it in the channel. Do it. Where are we? In the, oh, in the, um, oh, yeah. direct okay, messages. Do it, yeah, okay. try that. If it doesn't work, we can go into one of the rooms in my Discord. All right. So <clears throat> the date the first Garfield book was released. Mm hmm. But not really released, but but finished, nineteen seventy seven. Take the current year. Oh, and open up like a calculator on your on your screen. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're probably just going to do a screen share and then open up a calculator and then open up a text pad. I will do most of the math for you. I've got a calculator. You want me to share it? Yes. Two seconds. Wow, why doesn't that work? Okay, it should be really easy. So let's just turn on the display capture and you can see me. Oh! There, there's a picture yep. of me. <laughs> You're also going to need a text pad. A text pad. Got it. Okay. So you got the calculator and the text pad. All right. Good. Oh, wow. There's a lot going on now. Okay. All right. So take the current year, plug it into the calculator. Mm -hmm. Now subtract the year the first Garfield book was completed, which is 1977. All right. There you go. 40. Or large. Now put that word 40 large into a text document. Save that number. 40 large, like four zero? No, just 40 space large. And save it, so just 40 large. Yep. That's all you wanted that. Okay, and save it as what? Don't save it, just, just put it in that text Got document. It. We're gonna reference it later. Okay. The letter, okay. The number 40 and then the word large. All right, so now we're looking at Garfield. Okay, now paste that into the text document below it. Wow, there's a lot going on right now. So I've taken, I found the number value for each letter of the word Garfield. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so like, let you know, letter A is one. The uh, letter G is seven. Uh -huh. The R is eighteen, and then add them all together, you get sixty-two. Now, so you got your forty and you got your sixty-two. Uh huh. Now the strip in which Garfield supposedly dies. Do you still have that up? Oh, the evil one. Yeah, but he, where he fucking is dead. Uh yeah. One sec. Are you talking about the haunted house one? Yeah, check the date on that. Okay, wait. Where where did I have that? In my images and stuff. Okay. Oh my god, dude, one second. There's a lot going on. Um Just get the date from that strip. Get the date. It's on the bottom of panel one. Right. Please search. Or the evil. Ah, I just saw a gigantic. You know what I just saw pop up that actually scared me? <laughs> what? You're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh. This gif. I was like, oh god, what's that? Because we're talking about creepy stuff now. It was um, this. Wait for your stream, you gotta do it. Jesus. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why is that open? It, I just was going through my images, and it was in my folder, and it I saw Randy... Randy like a demon face. goblin screaming at you? Uh, yes. Exactly that. Why am I... All right. Where am I? All right, so the... Um, okay, I'm... Just, just, I'm ready. Just I'm going and finding it now. I'm sorry for being distracted. I've never... You've never been so demanding of me since you brought me to prison. All right, so not puppy cum. Just 
type Halloween Garfield and you'll find it. Or just go to that I got Discord it. chat. I just got it. And then, okay. It's in the, yeah. Okay, so here we are. This is actually a side by side version, which is a bit better. So. No, not that. <laughs> uh, here. Let me know if, when that comes up. Okay. I'm looking at Randy Quick. Okay. Yeah. All right, here it is. Now, go to the date. I think it's in panel two on this one. 10.24. No, 10.23. Oh, the first one's date. No, we did this oh, over no, Halloween, the... so 10.23 is 10 the first one when now, he gets out of bed. Now, take, take the day, so 23, and add it to the 62 that you got from Garfield's name. What do you get? Okay, I'm ready. Hang on. So it'd be 62 plus 23. Uh, I know you can do this, guys. It's it's 85. Okay, now write down 85 wide. 80, 80, 80. Five wide. Okay, now, so you got 40 and you got 85. Yeah. 40N, 85W. Latitude and longitude. Now, I need you to go back to that Jim Davis Wikipedia entry and look up his current location. His current location um, Albany, Indiana. No, oh, cute. North. 85, 85 fucking west. West. His strip will give you his exact location on the earth every time you run this equation. This is a town of 2,156 people. It is a tiny, tiny town. In, is, in one year, he Muncie. will have moved... <laughs> in one year, he will have moved one mile north, which he does every year on the dot. And you can reliably find his position whenever you want to by taking the current year and running this easy check. Now prove that. That's part how to meticulous. Me. Prove that part to me. That he moves. That he moves every a mile year? north every year. Look at where he was born. Marion, Indiana. Yeah, and now look at his age, seventy-two. Well, that's Marion, a... Indiana, is seventy-two miles south of Albany, Indiana. Mar Mario, Indiana. Marion, Indiana. Super, Super Mario. To Indiana. Albany, Indiana. 49, 42 miles. He lives southeast of where he was. This makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, he didn't, he didn't take uh, into account like continental drift and all that. Did I just... Go on a wild goddamn Garfield chase. I'm just giving you the equation. You can find out his is is okay. So exact that first part is weird, and I still need my mind blown from it because I don't get it. I don't get it well enough. So we took his the spelling, added together what the where's that notepad. We added You're together 7, notes, 1, 18, 6, 9, 5, 12, and 4, which is what Garfield is. It's 62. Then we took 85. We took 23, the date of that creepy one. We added 62, got 85. Yep. The, the, Where did we get uh, 40 long, from? 40 the longitude will never change. It will always be at uh, 85 degrees west longitude. And that's because it's been around for 40 years. Yeah. 
I latitude think this is changes complete, every year. This is complete bullshit. The date you'd originally subtract from the first book changes wow. every year because it increases in one year every year. So next year it's going to be 41. And you will be at 41. Is this how your brain 85. works? This is a fact. This is how he is this... lives his life. I'm just trying to understand Jim Davis. Is this is this... just how he understands the world. Uh oh, there's an alarm going off. Cast Toddle said bullshit, 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 bullshit. It stopped. Oh my Did you just put me on blast? Oh yeah, there we go. I got it. Believe what you will, Cast, but I'm giving you the facts here. Um well okay, so I don't know what what what's the what what's so I feel like we're we're running into a riddle, a riddle that's unsolvable, right? No, he solved it. I told you what it is. So we, we can move on. You don't believe me. You'll next year run the equation and you'll find exactly what you're Oh my god! I just had this thought when I was reading the chat. What if every time we edit a strip, Jim dies a little? We're killing him by proxy. Yeah, every time we cross something out that he wrote and write in He's... our own stuff, he like starts to his cells die or a tumor grows. And he's just like, oh you god. Think, you think we just removed the knowledge of that strip from his brain? Um like strike it, like he actually put the ideas on the page. I'm not sure. Because we, if we could obliterate the information that <gasps> formed the original, like, thought. I by think he wrote a funny it. one. This one's kind of funny. Ready to have your mind actually blown? I found on. one that made me kind of, kind of amused. This one, he's just sitting at a table thinking. And he changes expression a few times. He's sort of being dreamy in this panel. And then he's thinking, and then he's like, oh, I made a decision, right? Totally not okay. passive. Something suddenly happening, right? Happening, right? I almost feel like Jim Davis was weirdly happy this year. He says, Garfield says, the most important part of writing a book is picking a good title. I think I'll call mine Knights of Indiscretion. And he says, no, no, a writer must write something he knows about. So he says, that's it. I'll call it Knights of Indigestion. Because <laughs> he's fat. Because he's fat. Of course, that's the joke. Of course, that's the character. That is, but that's that kind is of the, like that is taking the joke, it though. somewhere, though. It's kind and of like, a, a very roundabout way of getting to the fat joke. So, like, in the next panel, this is a storyline. He's writing a book. He's He's got a mission. Garfield suddenly has ambition. And, like, yeah. drive and is doing something. And he's excited. And he's smiling. And his eyes are wide. Actually, actually don't, think, don't think about it. Yeah. Um, like this is a so change. much of com so much of comedy is about like proving how somebody is dumb. You know? Yeah. This core yeah. joke doesn't change. It's more just like the little revelations and the way it colors the world. Sure. So it's kinda like a, you know, like Homer Simpson is dumb, but he always does like a like every time they prove that like, in a new way, it's funny. It's basically what the idea behind Garfield is. He's fat and he will always be fat. And he's determined to say that. Pretty much. But it's just him constantly pointing it out to himself or finding new ways of discovering that he's fat. That's the comedy. Garfield, he's on a mission. Garfield, he's got ambition. So this is a three a three comic arc where he was going to write a book. <laughs> like arc? That's as long as these arcs ever got. So unless you were doing the Halloween strip where he puts it all on display. So here's the first that one. one was like five like, strips. He goes off to do something. He's really active. He's not. At, he's in the like strip right above. That, he's in bed the whole time. The Halloween one is just as a decide as a full sidebar. One, it's six strips long. He's walking off. Yeah. And then the that next one, and I'll read the text in a second. The next one is the one we read, and then the final one. Okay. So the first one goes. I think I'll write a book. A book about a handsome debonair cat 
who saved the world from alien invaders, ended war, and solved world hunger. And he says, nah, there are already too many autobiographies out there. That's not even about him being fat. That's about him having an inflated ego. That's funny. That's funny. Mm. He's like, I... Or he's bullshitting himself, and he's whatever. He's just being cute. But he's like, you know, I saved the world one time. No, I don't want to write about myself too much. Dude, and that'd, be awesome. that'd be awesome at the, at the, at the end of the strip. Yeah. He, like, forcibly morphed into Odie. Because, like, positive thoughts were taking over. Or he's like, like the Agent Smith style, like morphs into his face. Yeah. And Odie and suddenly has a Odie. thought bubble for once, and is like, "Welcome, friend." So anyway, <laughs> in the final in the final strip of this three page story, three strip story, there's he's sitting there and he's all like excited, and he's like, "Oh, I've got an, something," and then something else, and he's all sad again. And then he gives up the book; he's not going to write it anymore, and he's back to normal Garfield. Thank God, we got it back to yeah. Oh back, set it back to zero. Otherwise, be, that'd be like a unsettled plot thread that would have thrown the rest of the comic completely out um, of whack. That's it, he's saying. That's it. I have just come up with the cure for writer's cramp, writer's block. So now he's stuck. Puppy his, cam. His expression falls to misery, despair again, and. The book? Does it come up again? No. The next day, <laughs> the next day, the strip is John being depressed about the snow. Whoa. So yeah. it is John trying to be creative, basically. This is this was like a four part strip about John trying to come up with a creative idea and then sabotaging himself, failing, and then the next day you see the physical manifestation of him just like getting ready to just wallop his fucking own face with the snowball that is id and his uh, ego are preparing. Just does punishment for daring to even try. Uh huh. Did you know that Jim Davis died in 1981? Oh, really? Yeah. Like the Phantom, where he passes down the title to another person. Yeah. He was a. Uh, he grew up in Missouri and he moved to California to be an actor. And then he died at the age of 71. He was in Dallas. Anyway, um... Did you, did you know that he's actually, like, the lead vocalist and frontman for New Metal Sensation Corn? If you look up oh, the band Corn, it'll yeah, say... for a few years, yeah. For a few years. No, look up the band Corn, it'll say. John Davis, goddammit. No. I knew you were wrong. I took a look at the, like, type in Jim Davis and then look at the dis and whatever that word is at the top of the wiki page and look at the number of senators that have held the Jim Davis name. Jim H. Davis, wow. Jim J. Davis, J and then notice the fact that they are all in sequential order for the most part, where when one dies, the next begins their career. Huh. Like, they're technically born in around the same age, but they serve their once terms. once a year in Albany, Indiana for an orgy. I, no, I think they're the same man. Like an immortal. You think that they're all... You think that this man, James J. Davis, died in 1947, is also a Florida politician born in I 1957. I don't think he was born or died in those dates, but I think he served his term in the dates that they gave us. So he his, the terms his all dad, line up. Ran his yeah. vampire ass off to be a cartoonist. No, yep. I mean I don't think he's I a mean, vampire. Well, I think he, I think he is a like a Twilight Zone style he's, he's disembodied a, he's an emotional entity. Vampire. No, I think he's like a Twilight Zone style emotional entity that like was manifested from I don't know, just like where did. The, uh, the entity that is John Jim Davis originate because it had to be some kind of collective consciousness thing. Do we all as a society like just have that deep down? Um, <laughs> he I was think, reincarnated. Yeah, I mean, there of Jamie course, I, I, to, I guess to, I'd say that there are points in my life where I felt the way that Jim and Garfield and Cook Cody has. have always has felt. Things things have not gotten that but bad. Th oh my God, they have. 
but but <laughs> not as bad as John, John Arbuckle. The, the you had your is down that he's days. He's been having these same issues for longer than I've been alive. Longer than you've been alive. I think it's because he's a timeless being of just perpetual misery. Gaming Bear says that he's being reincarnated over and over like Jesus. I do, I, I do like that idea. Like Depression Jesus. <laughs> Hey, do you think every one of the 23 cats that he was born in, he absorbed their lives? And then <laughs> he can't die now because he has like 23 times 7 is on. Let me just do the numbers. Those 25 cats raped him cats. every night. So here's no, a if good he absorbed, if he, no, Hold on. If he absorbed the lives of his 25 cats yeah. times 7, that is 175 times nine. lifetimes. Nine? Cats, cats don't have nine lives. Oh, you're right. Yeah, nine. I was thinking seven years of bad luck. Right. He's got times seven that many years of bad luck because they always cross his path. Some of them were probably 225 black, lifetimes. He's cursed to walk this earth. <laughs> 225 <laughs> lifetimes. Can you fucking fathom it? <laughs> Dude, they, oh, he should wow. be on the Supreme Court then. Um, he is. <laughs> He probably is. He's, he's been a part of our political system as long <laughs> as our country has been in existence. Look at the Wikipedia uh, page. Not again. Uh, I have a good one. I don't know if you want to edit it or not. You want to look at it, though. He wakes up. Garfield wakes up. Turns the light on. There's a light suspended three feet from the ceiling. We'll ignore that. It says yeah. yawn. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. How tall is the cat? The cat is like a foot tall. Yes. <laughs> wow. And then, and a foot wide, this one. It's fat. I was afraid of this. Shuffle, scrape, scrape, shuffle. Oh, he turned the light off. And they turned it back on again. And realized his birthday was creeping up on him. And the joke, I guess, is that the calendar moves closer. You can see little movement lines. So he's afraid of his Beard. own his own celebration of his life is coming. And Garfield is depressed. I think it's because it reminds him that he hasn't aged. Or maybe he does age normally and then... Well, these characters don't dies age. dies normally. But that's pretty normal. Like, I think the first strip I ever saw that had characters that aged was for, for better or for worse. Which started a, a real-time clock for everybody. So, like, they age by a day every day. And then you see characters that you saw 20 years ago with wrinkles and with children. You know, and the kids like, get taller like, and they get married and stuff. Do you think like, like Garfield Mass Garfield like is just opera. Garfield like seven years later? Or um, Harper Long Cat's Live? Garfield is an agent of the deep state. Garfield laments about his impending mortality. Well, we all do that, but why would he care? He wants to die. He he is clearly leading the least healthy lifestyle. I, but I think he wants to die, but he knows he can't because he has 225 backed up lifetime. Do you have any ideas to edit this? Because I have one idea. I'm not sure if it's good, but it hit me. to edit this one where he's turning out the light, going to bed. Then he's like, here's the calendar creeping up. I was afraid of this. And then the calendar's closer. And my birthday's creeping up on me. Do you have anything for those? I guess the first one I'd say time is an illusion. And then he shuts off the light. Time does not exist. Time. And then the final one is like, Yet here we are. The the wait the second one's what? Um, something that reinforces the first one. So like, time does not exist is the first one. The second one's like, time is just an idea. It can't hurt me. And then the final okay final trip is, yet here we are. I like that. Okay, here's the final strip. The improved Garfield. Um, time is an illusion. Time Definitely is just an it's... idea. It cannot hurt me. Yet here we are. Okay, maybe that went even sadder than it used to be. It's an achievement well, for Garfield. He was, I think he's just about as sad, but at least he's, I don't know. He's, he's cognizant of what's going exactly. on. He's not like flailing horribly down like a pit. 
he's actually like sure. confronting the situation. He's like a philosopher trying to confront his own mortality. I'm tempted to draw a little monster face on the calendar, but I won't. Um, gosh, this is so insane because you look at any of these and you see unfunny garbage. Ugh, here's a slapstick I, I, one. The um, so in the original Halloween one where he dies. Yeah. There's a way of reading that where like it's the opposite of Garfield minus Garfield where Garfield wakes up and he is perceiving reality as it is for a brief horrifying amount of time and then he escapes back to his fantasy. Fantasy right. evaporates in his hand and then he goes insane and then only once he passes through the threshold of madness does he regain his fantasy which is that John exists and Odie exists. Mm -hmm. John and Odie are the fantasy. And he actually does live in this decrepit old house. He's like a stray cat. And John is the projection of Garfield, not the other way around. Whoa, they're not like a unified being. Oh shit. And like they're really? not a unified being, and then Garfield isn't a projection of John. John is a projection of Garfield. He needs some kind of like <laughs> human being that seems to know what they're doing, even though he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, picture He basically them. just invented his own authority. Picture them as every man. You know, it's sort of like that's what he's trying to paint the picture is that everybody's like this. But they're not always like this. People, and this is a thesis statement. Oh my for God, you're thing. right. People um, always oh project. Oh my God. They always project. They always say, you know, I, th I think you're up to something because they're always up to something. Or if they trust yes. you, it's because they feel like they're trustworthy. So yes. the idea um, I'm trying to spit out here is like, look at, and this is like, I don't know if this is off the wall or not, but. This whole thing came out in the, like, you know, decades ago, where yep. people were bitching about the gay agenda. And the gay agenda was some sort of weird secret plan that all the gays had to recruit gays. Otherwise, why were they something. dressing up like that and having parades and all this stuff? And, you know, them. all these gay celebrities, oh, they're all up to something. And that's because there's a straight agenda that's very real where we are culturally encouraged, if not forced, to marry someone of the opposite sex get, and get a big family going. Um, that's an agenda. And every time someone runs counter to it, says, oh, I don't want kids, people get upset about it because they're subscribing to that weird philosophy or that weird um, compulsion or whatever it is. It's yeah. a cultural thing. And then okay. I find so many people, like open-minded people who are just like, yeah, do what you want with your life. And then other people ask me, why did you get a vasectomy? Male and female, they ask me, why did you get a vasectomy? And they start writing me off. They start getting pissed that I'm not yep. going to get married and have kids. It's like, no, I'm not gay. I'm, I, I get, who who's gay would get a vasectomy? I, I, it's, the idea is that I <laughs> I get to do what I want with my body and my, and my life and my time. And yep. I decided early on, as a teenager, I didn't want children. And then at the age of 25, I had the surgery and seven years hence, I don't regret it. Yep. Um, and so that sort of people with their programming. So getting it back to Jim, the idea is that he's doing that. He's doing that projection. He's doing that sort of thinking everybody's the way he is because he can't imagine anyone else because, and that's a, that, the reason people know, like it that. Is, it is a strip of like, it is a comic of just like book after book after book, like 17 books, all of the same basic like structure around the universe that yeah. works in exactly the way that, um, I, I kind of like what you were kind of hinting at at the start where like, this is Garfield's idea of what humans are right? because he wants to invent his own master. And so like, Okay. Garfield's building his idea of humans based on the way that he sees humans like interact with each other and the way that they present themselves. So like, he's created this like irredeemable idiot buffoon, right? Who seems to who he believes knows more than he does because he's a voice of authority, right? But yeah. us from the outside can clearly see that John Arbuckle is just like yeah. a living clown. Oh God, he is though. Like he, whether they're a projection of one another or real creatures or not is immaterial because they're fantastical things anyway and they are all aspects of Jim's sure. psyche so every yeah. time that I do any kind of character whether I'm writing or I'm performing I always 
it's always something that I understand. Someone like that has some aspects of my personality. So like, here's me angry over there yelling at me, or here's me having fun, like having too much fun and being gregarious, and I've got to calm that yep. creature down. Um, and I like think jump that, jump it into characters. Let you. I think that Garfield. That Garfield. Jim has, jumping is, into a character. Is personally torturing Jim. I think the fact that he created it is married to a cartoon cat. Is, yep. is and, making again, him John John Arbuckle was a cartoonist in the first draft. He was meant yeah. to be Jim Davis. Yes. Without a doubt. So he never it's, divorced himself personally from the material in any in any way. And anyway, that's that's not a horrible thing. But the fact is that it's the most depressing thing in the world. The world and, he and created it has not changed for like seventeen books. Incompetence, gluttony, and punishment. <laughs> Punishment for joy. Exactly. Often, un, un, often the people who are happy. Being, but, uh, and, and then like paranoia. Uh, There's another thing I look at. I love that you brought up was the spider yeah. attack. The where spider like attack, any olive um, ranch brought by any being is immediately met with distrust. Right. And then right. Um, <laughs> he's happy as he's walking by the dog, uh, the, behind the fence. He's like uh, taunting him, like, "Yes, I'm on top of the world for <laughs> once." And then he gets immediately punished when he smiles. And he's yes. trying to write a book, and he's like, he, oh, I don't know what to do right now. Grabs the dog's hand, or wraps it around his own neck, <laughs> and that because it's the only way he can end it. orgasm. It's, and he starts, you don't see it, but he's masturbating. His <laughs> stomach is too big for you to see his hand. I like to imagine that every panel has a fourth panel that he drew, but got cut off, because it was like, he drew it in HD. That's a great and idea. the books were all in SD. So every, every panel has a fourth panel that, like, like you know, the fourth panel of the dog one is, of course, him just busting his nuts. Let's do one. But, of the, let's do. Let's add a panel to one of them. Would, would the what would the come jizz one like one where he rips a fat? I need a piece of line blank paper. Here. Here's one. All right, so let's do. You called Garfield HD. Let's do this. Um, so here's a strip. Garfield just woke up. John asked him a dumb question. He falls asleep. We're going to do this panel here. And just this panel here. So. Good morning, Garfield. How did you sleep? Like this. John says, I see. He's like, oh, how'd you sleep? But uh, here's how I sleep. I sleep like sleeping. All right. Fourth panel. Okay. And I'll draw it. Can you open up paint and then draw it? You want it on paint? Because I'd mm -hmm. rather just hold it up next to the book. Oh yeah, I could do that. So I'm, you tell me what to do. And it'll go right in this little Garfield sized square. Can you make um, like John and the world around Garfield sleeping evaporate and he's just in a white void? Garfield is floating and sleeping though. Fine. Here's the here's the final panel. I think he also make like John kind of like being dashed away as if he was made of sand and then goes blown away by like wind, you know, just like clearly it was nothing else but just a projection of Garfield. I'm already done. <laughs> you gotta love the white void. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the idea that every time, like the universe only exists to Gar Garfield perceives it. And then the second oh, he goes to sleep, John just ceases to exist. <laughs> Here's what. Here's what. Okay, so he's like, he gets <laughs> up, he walks over, and he's he looks at something. Okay. See you later, Garfield. I have to pick up spring water and fertilizer. Boy, is John spoiling that burn. I require only the simple things in life, like a long nap and a warm sunbeam. This has got to stop. So what he's looking at, he's like, oh, I'm getting up. I want to go have a nap. Oh, there's a plant with sunglasses. This has got to stop. And then the final panel is the plant in a white void with disease coming out of it because the plant had fallen asleep. No, and then it's just reality the void. was just the idea of the plant. It's just the void again. This has got <laughs> to stop. 
And then the last panel. <laughs> and every time you draw some, the void, you draw some Z's on the oh plant, God. though. No, I just played these games. Um, this game where it's like every day is the same dream. Yeah. Or, and yeah, have you played that? I have not, but I kind of got the gist of it. Like you wake up and you do yeah, a exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. He wakes then, up, he goes to work, every morning. and then sometimes he sits in his cubicle and sometimes he jumps off the building. No matter what he does, he wakes up the next morning in his bed, gets dressed, goes to work. That's the game. And little variations throughout the day. And that's exactly yeah. what the shit is. That's exactly what the shit is. So, like, they never age. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> they go through they the same They don't progress level. or grow in any way. Right. So here, Garfield is sneaking up on a donut. Who cares if what he Jim, says? If He's John, up on or a donut. If, if Jim ever actually became like, like he just madly fell in love with this woman out of the blue and suddenly became deliriously happy, do you think like Odie would begin just becoming this like ripped demon in the comic book that was like shoving all the other characters out of every frame and like would not allow any of them any line? <laughs> What's the shark one? Oh, that's Garfield. He's sneaking up on a donut, and then there's nothing but a white void as he's about to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything ends. Uh, here's so it's kind of like one of the. It's like, it's like when you're in no clip mode and you go into a wall, and then everything just like shifts around. It's like that's what happens. You ready for the new the game? final panel? Here's the new game. You and I. Maybe just you it first, then I'll, we can, you know, I'll make one and then we'll collaborate on one. Uh, you go ahead, use these three squares and invent a Garfield strip. That's your only prompt. Okay, I'm working on it now. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna mail it to you. Oh, you're working on one? All right, I'll draw one. I'll draw one right here. Hmm. How is everybody in the stream today? How many people do we have? Seven. Hi, guys. That's cool. Feel free to say anything you want if you have any uh, comments, questions, concerns, lawsuits. Be sure to let us know. I have um, pants on. They're thermal underwear.
Okay. Sending you mine. Okay. I'm mostly done with mine. I also have... Every time you say the word die, it asks for a moderator's response. It's pretty funny. Um, Kaz already said he doesn't want his kids this way. He got his homosexual vasectomy. You called me. You called me out. I know. I'm, I'm really gay. I'm really right, gay. I sent, it, I sent it in the Discord. Okay, perfect. Mine is in a little bit, but we will put yours on display now. The Discord. And saved. I'm not looking at it. I'm just saving it. Okay, you'll have to open it up full screen. Or I'm going to put it right here. Please take 40 milligrams at 4 p.m. every day. Call me if there's any issue. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> Thoughts, audience? Do you like it? Poor Garfield. He's goofed it again. So what was your inspiration? I like the idea that John got help. And then... Like, <laughs> yeah. And he just always gone. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> and it's like... Garfield's finally like his demon is set free. <laughs> um, finally free of sloth and gluttony. Audience, I got a ten out of ten. Well, I got a. Non numerical number out of 10. It's a real out of 10. Someone wants to steal it. Oh my god. So. Sorry, this is taking a minute, but these characters are fucking weird. He does have like an art style that doesn't look like anything else. Like, no, I know. Almost surrealist. What I don't know. I don't think I can't think of another art style that starts with his weird eyes and then grew a body out from the eyes. They're enormous too. We can talk about the shape of these characters in a second because the drawing them I find they're totally bizarre. And what's with John's hair? It's black on the back. It's black on the back and wet and light on the front. What I are you really supposed to be? Supposed to be... Do you think I thought it was the halo from to be his shooting. death? Like he's dead. As we know, he's dead, so there's a halo above him that we don't see shining on his hair and making it bright when it's really brown. If it's like a head wound that's seeping out into his like hair, darkening it. Alright, here's my strip. Um, so, I'll wait till you catch up and see it. Let me know when it comes up. Alright. Okay, it just, just appeared. Alright, first we see him with his hand around Odie's neck. <laughs> his we eyes just think he's choking <laughs> are horrifying. <laughs> it is we like, just think he's choking him. He's beating a pure eye. And like, then we realize like that Odie's head has been removed. -eyed, and he has painted a pentagram in blood. And he says, finally. God is alive inside <laughs> me. And he says, God is alive inside me. And this begins... Um, raising his arms in the air in joy. That was mine. <laughs> I do like that he nev never blinks. So You can just see okay. beyond. And obviously the message here is that Satan is Garfield's real god. <laughs> is Garfield Satan? Yeah. yeah. That's a discussion for another Yeah. Time. I mean, we're getting into deep territory there that I don't understand well enough to actually discuss. But yeah, he is. Um, so let's collaborate on the strip. You can draw it with your computer because you're quicker at it. But I'll help you write it. Um, so 
let's say John's involved this time. John and Garfield. Uh, hmm. And just normal enough, they are. Um, jo uh, Garfield's on the table, and John's standing next to him. Hmm. Okay. Let's start there. And then. This is going to go on the. This is the internet, Gamey Bear. What do you think we're doing? Um, so. Let's say Garfield is hungry. John says, for what? And where I think I'm going with this is that Garfield's hungry for something other than food. But I'll let you take it from there. Okay, so John and Garfield are on the table mm -hmm. talking to each other. Yeah. I gotta draw it. And then Garfield says, hungry for sex. So John climbs bodily onto the table, throws his pants around his ankles, and fucks Garfield. Now, let's do something else. Let's do something other than that. Um, so the second panel, what do you suppose Garfield's hungry for? Other than food. Like validation of any kind. Okay. Time so drawing. Validation of any kind. <laughs> what does John look like? Oh, you want a reference for John? I can hold up a comic that's similar. I think I, I think I got approximate John here. <laughs> um, can we use my Patreon money? It is kind of for you guys. If I were in my room alone, like John Arbuckle, just like screaming at a cat that I imagined, and I had a Patreon for it, that'd be something else. <laughs> you know? People always ask me, like, how can you spend all of your time alone like that? I was like, I'm never alone. I am never alone. Absolutely never. I'm always talking to people. Uh, the most alone I ever was was when I was with that girl that I can... I don't want to get into that, but I didn't have any friends at that time. It sucked. Uh, yeah. So, he's hungry for validation of any kind. No, we gotta go sing something better than that. Well, if we have a good punchline, that's fine. Or he could say death. What was the original thing? He was like, I'm hungry or something? Did he just say, I'm hungry? Did you use that classic <laughs> Arthur yeah. punchline? Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna actually, I do that kind of like and then, the empty strip with just the word, I'm hungry in it. <laughs> yeah. And then the next one. Dude, all right, how's about this? How's about. Go ahead. Hey, Arthur Mr. says. Uh, first strip is Garfield and John just kind of stare at each other. As you can see, next strip, we've been editing both of them. These. Next strip is both of them saying, I'm hungry at the same time. Like, exactly the same time. <laughs> they both say, I'm hungry in the next panel. Yeah, exactly the same time. So and the first then... strip is, I'm hungry, and they both st they both repeat, I'm hungry. <laughs> Where the hell are and you so going with this? First strip is nothing. They're just staring at each other. Next strip is they're both saying I'm hungry. Third strip is hmm, um, like them staring at each other. They hug each other and, and cry. Or like they hug each other and cry. <laughs> That's strip three. They yeah, they both say I'm hungry. Then they hug each other and cry. Okay. There's nothing there for them. Food and doesn't then... fill the hole that's really there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dark, Kaz. I like it. I think that's yeah, good. I do kind of like the idea of trying to draw them. And then, a, and then a white void. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the perfect punchline. 
<laughs> I love that you said that. That was the first words out of your mouth. How should this end? This fourth, this theoretical fourth panel. The white void. <laughs> and then you wanted to fill it with stuff. I was like, no, you nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> I wanted to put Garfield sleeping in it so that the world was clearly just his existence. No, he's not even. He I do, exists. Yeah, I do. He exists in I do like panels. I do. And do then like everything's gone. I do, I do. <laughs> the camera just lingers and it blinks out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah everything but the camera everything but Jim Davis Jim Davis just staring at emptiness like imagine if we just started seeing comics published comics <laughs> that were just blank white square so blank white fun. square blank white square Garfield <laughs> Oh my god, his arm is so fucked up in this. Can I just get Garfield in here? This is starting to depress me. <laughs> oh. That's Garfield. Yeah. That's Garfield. It's Garfield. It's so relatable. Don't you hate life now that everyone Pe in your favorite comics? People that excited? relate to like Kathy legitimately scare me. Oh yeah. Like, I think Dilbert's something fun. Wrong. I, I like the character of Wally and Dilbert. The guy who Wally doesn't do that give boss? a solid fuck. Oh, that guy. He's the bald <laughs> guy in the, in the square glasses. Yeah. And he does not give a no. solid flying fuck. And people tell him to work, and he's like, no. He doesn't even come up with something clever. He's just like, no. <laughs> and, he, and he has the job. <laughs> I did like it was how it was him, Wally and Dilbert, who are the ones in the, you know, the Dilbert animated short that like ended yeah. it. Oh, Ga Gamey Bear raises a good point. We are um, all a part of Jim Davis's imagination. And Jim Davis is writing our lives. <laughs> So as as long as Garfield books come out, we have an existence. But the moment yeah, the moment he passes he dies, away, we blink or... away. We're all gone. We the universe was created with Jim Davis's birth, or the birth of a Jim Davis. <laughs> Until there were people named Jim Davis, there is no world. And when we stop naming people that, if there's no let no Jim Davis is left, we're gone. We're back to the white void. Now I'm gonna make this a five panel, an unprecedented five panel. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for the Super Bowl of Garfield strips. I'm making one too. It's just, it's Do we have them say something three panel when they're hugged? No. They were gonna hug and cry. But I'm so excited for the last two panels. God, John's mouth is weird. <laughs> you know, he has kind of a cat-like face. So it's like one being merging into, like, forgetting that it's supposed to be two distinct beings every now and then? Yeah. Every so often. You have to okay, start with an eye. Let's go put the date in there and I'll be done. Oh, the date. Has there ever been anything more ripe for parody than this vile, vile piece of cartooning? I mean, it's like pure raw material. For it's like having an abusive father in, the, in every newspaper. <laughs> it does feel like it should be a collage thing, you know? Like, there should be a class in, like, school when you're, like, in third grade, and you're like, okay, guys, cut out a bunch of Garfield strips, just put them together, however you want. And oh, then uh, you know what? I'm gonna kids grab would scissors. come up with, like, the greatest shit in I'm the world. I'm gonna grab scissors and try to make a really good Garfield strip out of three random panels from one of these books. 
Okay, I finished mine. So I'm gonna put it on display if that's alright. There we go. I'm uploading mine now. Okay. I'm not gonna need to explain this one. Oh my god. <laughs> He's smiling the whole time. <laughs> like I don't even hear the blam because he wouldn't hear it either. That's it. Alright, here, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I'm going to try not just to look at... Okay, wait. <laughs> wait. I think... <laughs> You okay. need to full screen this bad oh, boy. Oh, I'm ready. I'm hungry. They hold each other and cry. <laughs> then they fade. <laughs> they fade a little bit. Oh. <laughs> you can see down in the corner, I have my latest and only thing on my download list is puppycum.jpg. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the worst file name you can have on your computer. It wasn't if, even the one. I, I, I didn't put it on prison it. And they found they seized your computer to try to find a crime to hold you in prison with. That's what they end up with. I'll just rename it to Anarchist Manifesto. Um, so <laughs> you forgot to put stripes on Garfield. Who was that? Is he fading away too? <laughs> He's just they've been fading slowly for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, John's not looking at him from the back, so the stripes don't exist. They like render as he looks at them. It almost looks like you know? Jim is kissing Garfield on the eye. They might, they might be. They might little, be. I love this. That's great. We both, <laughs> we both have like sad deaths for comics this time. Like Oblivion seems to be the running <laughs> goof in uh, Garfield. I did just mention that this was making me depressed, so it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Oh my good, good gravy. Um, I'm gonna pee. You take control of the whole, uh, the whole uh, stream for a second. Actually, I think I'm gonna go eat some stuff, so... Yeah, that's probably good. we'll do. call it. Well, you can call it there. They're dead. They died. I have one more idea, but we could do it another time. Alright. Alright. I'll see you right after... Wait. I'm gonna read us a Far Side Gallery comic. So that Play we... Wait on me. We have something, a good note to end on. Then, but what's what's a better note than Oblivion? <laughs> this fucking comment. So <laughs> it's just no, nothing. Here's a pair of germs in clothing, and one of them grabs the other one's shirt, and says, "Shirt's on fire." Now it's out. And it says humor at its lowest form. <laughs> Jesus. Got a little sperm there in the corner. Is there a sperm there? Uh, I think it's a tapeworm, maybe. Oh, there's sperm everywhere. Believe you me. All right. Good guess. Let's we'll call it there. Everybody say goodbye. Goodbye, Mothra. Goodbye. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye to... Um, all of nine of you. Uh, your names are. Um, Anthony Birch and Gaming Brother. There were nine of you. There are nine of you. I just erased the chat somehow. I don't know how to use this. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>